This lecture is about a web search. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the, one of the most important applications of text retrieval, web search engines. So let's first look at the, some general challenges and opportunities in web search. Now, many information retrieval algorithms had been developed before the web was born. So when the web was born, it created the best opportunity to apply those algorithms to major application problem that everyone would care about. So naturally, there had to be some uh, further extensions of the classical search algorithms to address some new challenges encountered in web search. So here are some general challenges. First, this is a scalability challenge. How to handle the size of the web and ensure completeness of coverage of all the information? How to serve many users quickly and by answering all their queries? Right, so that's one major challenge. And before the web was born, the scale of search was relatively uh, small. The second problem is that there's low quality information and there are often spams. The third challenge is dynamics of the web. The new pages are constantly created and some pages may be updated uh, every, uh, very quickly. So it makes it harder to uh, keep the index fresh. So these are some of the challenges that uh, we have to solve in order to uh, build a high quality web search engine. On the other hand, there are also some interesting opportunities that we can leverage to improve uh, the search results. There are many additional heuristics. For example, uh, you know, using links, that we can uh, leverage to improve scoring. Now, the algorithms that we talked about, such as the vector space model, are general algorithms. And they can be applied to any search applications. So that's uh, the advantage. On the other hand, they also don't take advantage of special characteristics of pages or documents in a specific application, such as web search. Web pages are linked with each other. So obviously, the link information is something uh, that we can also leverage. So because of these challenges and opportunities, uh, there are new techniques that have been developed for uh, web search or due to the uh, need for web search. One is parallel indexing and searching. And this is to address the issue of scalability. In particular, uh, Google's imaging of MapReduce is very influential and has been very helpful in that aspect. Second, uh, there are techniques that are developed for uh, addressing the problem of spams, so spam detection. We have to prevent those uh, spam pages from being ranked high. And there are also techniques to achieve robust ranking. And we're going to use a lot of signals to rank pages so that it's not easy to spam the search engine uh, with a particular trick. And the third uh, line of techniques is uh, link analysis. And these are techniques that can uh, allow us to um, to improve search results by leveraging extra information. And in general, uh, in web search, we're going to use multiple features for ranking, not just link analysis, but also uh, exploiting all kinds of clues like uh, the layout of web pages or anchor text that describes a link to another page. So here's a picture showing the basic search engine technologies. Basically, this is the web on the left and then user on the right side. And we're going to help these, this user to get access to the web information. And the first component is a crawler that would crawl pages. And then the second component is indexer that would take these pages to create the inverted index. The third component is a retriever uh, that would use the inverted index to answer a user's query by talking to the user's browser. And then the search results will be uh, given to the user. And then the browser will show those results and to uh, allow the user to interact with the web. So we're going to talk about uh, each of these uh, components. First, we're going to talk about the crawler, also called a spider or you know, a, a software robot that would do something like a crawling pages on the web. Uh, to build a toy crawler is relatively easy because you just need to start with a set of seed pages and then fetch pages from the web and parse these pages to figure out the new links and then add them to the priority queue and then just uh, um, explore those additional links. Right? 
But to build a real crawler actually is tricky and there are some complicated issues that you have to deal with. So for example, robustness. What if the server doesn't respond? What if there's a track that uh, generates dynamically generated web pages that might uh, attract your crawler to keep crawling on the same site and to fetch dynamically generated pages? There is also this issue of crawling courtesy, and you don't want to overload one particular server with many crawling requests. Right? And um, you have to respect the, the robot exclusion protocol. You also need to handle different types of files. There are images, PDF files, all kinds of formats on the web. And you have to also uh, consider UI or extension. So sometimes those are CGI scripts. And there are internal references, etc. And sometimes you have JavaScripts on the page that um, they also create the uh, challenges. And you ideally should also recognize redundant pages because you don't have to duplicate the, those pages. And finally, you may be interested to discover hidden URLs. Those are URLs that may not be linked uh, to any page, but if you truncate the URL to a shorter path, you might be able to get some additional pages. So what are the major crawling strategies? In general, breadth is first uh, is most common because it naturally balance, balances the server load. You would not uh, keep probing a particular server um, with many uh, requests. Also, parallel crawling is very natural because this task is very easy to parallelize. And there are some variations of the crawling task. And one interesting variation is called focused crawling. In this case, we're going to crawl just uh, some pages about a particular topic. For example, all pages about automobiles. Right? And, and this is typically going to start with a query. And then you can use the query uh, to get some results from a major search engine. And then you can start with those results and gradually crawl more. So one challenge in crawling is to find the new pages that people um, have created and people probably are creating new pages all the time and this is very challenging if the new pages have not been actually linked to any old page if they are then you can probably find them by recrawling the old page so these are also some uh, interesting challenges that have to be solved and finally uh, we might face the scenario of incremental uh, crawling or repeated crawling Right. So you first, let's say if you want to build a web search engine and you would first crawl a lot of data from the web. And then, but then uh, once you have collected all the data then in the future, you just need to uh, crawl the, the updated pages. You, you know, in general, you don't have to recrawl everything, right? Or it's uh, not necessary. So in this case, you, your goal is to minimize the resource um, overhead by using minimum resources to, to just uh, uh, still crawl the updated pages. So this is actually a very interesting research question here. And uh, it's still an uh, open research question in that uh, you know, there aren't uh, many uh, standard uh, algorithms established yet for uh, doing this, this task. But in general, you can imagine, you can learn from the past experience. Right? So uh, the, the two major factors that you have to consider are, first, uh, will this page be updated frequently? And do I have to crawl this page again? If the page is a static page that hasn't been changed for months, you probably don't have to recrawl it every day, right? Because it's unlikely that it will be changed frequently. On the other hand, if it's a, uh, you know, sports score page that uh, gets updated very frequently and you may need to recall it maybe even multiple times uh, on the same day. And the other factor to consider is, is this page frequently accessed by users? If it, if it is, then it means it's a high utility page. And then that's, it's more important to ensure such a page to be fresh compared with another page that has never been fetched by any users for a year then even though that page has been changed a lot, then it's probably not necessary to crawl that page, or at least it's not as, not as urgent as um, to maintain the freshness of a frequently accessed page by users.
So to summarize, web search is one of the most important applications of text retrieval, and there are some new challenges, particularly scalability, efficiency, quality information. There are also new opportunities, particularly rich link information and layout, etc. A crawler is an essential component of web search applications. And in general, we can classify two scenarios. One is initial crawling. And here we want to uh, have complete crawling uh, of the web if you are doing a general search engine or focused crawling if you want to just target at a certain type of pages. And then there is another scenario that's incremental uh, updating of the crawl data or incremental crawling. In this case, you need to optimize the resource. Try to use minimum resource to get uh, the needed uh, fresh information. Thank you.